Good morning, everybody. So, yeah, Olivia's waving in the background. So we're going to try this again. Okay, are you going to cooperate this time? Yeah. Yeah. So he was being very loud the first time I tried to do this, and he wasn't really cooperating with us. But because we have a selfie hog here, he just wanted to be in the camera. So we decided to have him in here. Look at that smile. It's so good. So much confusion. So what our plan... Yeah. So what our plan for today is we're going to kind of walk you through what we've seen with the rail and uh, our, our Graco crib that we have. What was the rail brand? Regalo. Regalo. We have the link in the previous video when we were setting it up. We'll link that in there so you guys can go back and watch that. Yeah, super excited. So I'm going to hand the camera off to Olivia and she can hold it while we go through and, while we go through and walk through some of the stuff. Okay. So we showed this in the last one, but putting this on, there's no issue with him doing this. Getting in when he's ready to go to bed and getting up in the morning when he's ready to get up. Leave the door a little bit cracked. He actually can open the door now. What did he do with you? He came up and smacked you in the face the first night that he got up early. He did. It was quite unpleasant of a wake up. <laughs> can you at least look at the camera while you're doing that? Can you wave? Can you wave? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> so, one of the biggest benefits of having it set up the way that we do is because he can get up and down you know, when he feels like. When he's ready to go to bed, he just comes in here. That's his indication to us. It's like we're ready to go to bed. Most of the time, we'll already have him in his pajamas. We already have his pull-up on for the night. He just goes, he gets in, and we're good for the night. Usually he doesn't act like this. It's babble. We've had a couple instances since we set this up that we've had to take the the mattress out. We've had to change the sheets. Really? I knew this was going to be a problem. I did. We were going to work with this. So regardless of how you have your blanket set up, you have this pulling out. I'm blocking you. Yeah. So what we found is we started taking this piece out. All of these buckles, because they're not actually tied down to anything, would just unclip whenever you pull them off. And then every single time this happens, they fall off, and it just goes weird repetitive cycles where you put it in, one side falls off. You need three or four hands to make it work right. Okay. What we found out is that you can interlace these in and out. We don't have it right now, but we have this right here on the bottom, which keeps these stable. But as you put it in, you're going to be putting it at that angle anyway, so these won't fall off. That was part of our problem. We were putting it in here. This would knock off. I don't like that. But in doing that, the entire thing isn't falling down. If that piece falls off, the entire thing isn't going to come crashing down because we have it interlaced here. That would be my first tip on that. They don't tell you to do that in the instructions, but it kind of locks and keeps everything together. Easy bed making, more or less. So if you got those pieces locked in there, it just falls down into place, good to go. We had a couple headaches. First couple times we did this, because literally every single time you put it down in there, this side would fall down, that side would fall down, big debacle. Interlace them through the springs on the bottom, you'll be good to go. This is designed to also fit on a twin bed, because it has those extender pieces. Fortunately, you're not going to be able to do that with an actual bed. Unless it has the slots. Some do. Some do. But given that situation, you're probably not taking the full top mattress off if you're having to change it out. Yep. So kind of irrelevant at that point in my opinion. We haven't had any issue tucking the blanket underneath so it doesn't roll up. Because mm -hmm. like I said, it's interlocked on the bottom once it gets put in. It's not going to move. No. Yeah. So I realized as I said this, they didn't actually clarify with the whole waving piece of why we aren't doing it on this side. 
and maybe I did and I just didn't think I did right. The reason why we have it waving on this end is because when you're putting the mattress in, this is the side that would get bucked while you're putting it down. Okay, if any of these unstrap, the whole piece would fall down. But because this is interlaced like this, the whole thing isn't gonna come toppling down and you gotta start over from scratch, okay? The reason why we don't have this end laced up is because if you're putting the mattress in and you have this piece laced up and this gets screwed up, you're going to have to take everything out anyway and reset it. So I'd rather have it fail on that end and i got to take everything out and replace it than have it locked in there and then crooked some weird way and then the mattress not sit right. And then i got to take it out again anyway. To me, this is the main reason why you want it just so as you're putting it in there, if those two fall down for some reason, the entire thing isn't toppling and all of the straps come all the way out and you gotta start completely over again. So, so what, what I wanted to touch on was what kind of prompted us to start this transition into the toddler bed out of the crib. I was kind of blinded by it. I didn't really know that we we're close to that time and you were the one who actually recognized that we needed to be adjusting to it and what did you see that prompted all of this? So what CJ started to do and Charles kind of touched on this while we were talking about what we've done with it since we've had the crib transitioned and the rail is that CJ started to put himself to sleep and part of that was that he would try and climb into his crib. So it's like, okay, we, we really have to think about changing it. And then one weekend we dropped him off with my parents, who somehow still had a toddler crib or a toddler bed for some reason. Your parents don't get rid of anything. My parents don't get rid of a lot of things. <laughs> but it worked in our favor because it was a good test to see what he would do if we were to make his crib a bed. And he did very well. He did basically what he's been doing with us, which is, oh, he gets up and he plays a little bit and he decides, hey, I want something to eat. Unless I don't open the door. Wake up. Wake up. Then he just still does the crying because he can't get the door open. He's about 50-50 with the door. He, he's getting better with... If the door, if he has to pull the door open, that's the 50-50. If he can turn and push the door open, he's good. Yeah, he has no issue with that. No. Daycare actually got mad at us for that. But the first couple nights that we were in the transition, we actually got up and turned the lights on before he even got up. Oh my gosh, that was bad. So we actually got to sleep in. I don't know if he was just happy because he didn't, he knew he was able to get up and move, mm -hmm. but... You know, if he's up early enough, too early, we'll just put him back in there, say, no, it's still bedtime. And we've had a couple issues with that. But most of the time, it's just, yeah, he just comes and <laughs> whacks you on the head and says, it's time to wake up. I want food. Yes, he whacks me. Thank you very much. Not you. You're closer to the door. I am closer to the door. Oh, boy. It was one of those where it's like, mm, we should start thinking about it. Did a test drive, and it's like, okay. Seemed to be a pretty easy transition. Mm -hmm. He accepted it really well. So. I think one day, one morning, he slept in until seven, and normally he wakes up sometime between five and five thirty. Five thirty. Yeah. It was so fantastic. Brent, Whoa! hello, head in the head in the. <laughs> yeah, we had to put the plug back in. Oh. He was. Uh, <laughs> he was being rowdy. Hi. That's going to be a rough transition when we take that away. Yeah. Time frame is three months. Dinosaur? What does the dinosaur say? Rawr. 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 Okay. So is that it? I don't really remember anything else. Bye. It is finally warm up here. Oh, oh yeah. My we had mountains and mountains of snow, and now Bye. it's... Uh, we we have plenty of grass. We still have piles of snow, but 
<laughs> we got a little river outside going down to the drain. Yeah. It's kind of gross. But it's not gross. I'm happy about it. I'm just happy that it cleared out before it started really melting. Mm, true. Then we would have had water in the, on the floor. Yay! Well, that was our update on it. Hope it was informative. We're going to leave it at that. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Can you say bye-bye? Bye. -bye? bye.